All right. I think we can hit the ground running. Thank you so much for everyone for, for joining. Um, this will be, we will record this on, on YouTube for those that have, uh, that have missed out or might sort of join on a little bit later. But um, I've got two very special people that I wanted to introduce you. We've been, we've been chatting about this for, for quite a while and two people that have had a massive impact on, on my guiding career and still um, we've become very good friends over the last sort of 14 years. Skull and Candice from Ulavani Environmental Training. Skull Candice, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I know this, is, um, this has become the, the new norm, the new world as it is, um, whether we like it or not. But um, yeah, truly honored to have you guys along. And I think we're going to be chatting about some really cool things, um, just about sort of courses, the beautiful campus that you guys have. And maybe sort of towards the end, you know, just about guiding in general and, and the industry as a whole. So I think it'll be awesome. great value for all of you that are joining. Um, I'm going to start off, um, Candice, I'm going to share the screen pretty shortly, but I wanted to give you guys, um, just show you. Let me just put that up there. Can you guys just uh, in the chat box, just uh, give me a thumbs up that you can all see this. Yes. All right, I've got a yes. Okay, cool. yes. So, so that's, that's good to go. Right, I'm just gonna <laughs> keep that there. I'm just going to share this um, share this video with you guys. And um, Ulavani, this year, it's 15 years. So congratulations, um, Scott and Candice, on Thank you. amazing achievement. But um, just to share this video with you guys, just to give you a little bit of a better idea of what Ulavani is all about. Have a look at this. Okay, so I mean that brings back such um, amazing memories, and it's like I'm feeling super a bit old. Proud. Uh, sorry, are you feeling a bit old? I'm feeling a bit <laughs> old. Um, for the, I remember like it, it's crazy. It's 14 years ago. I remember arriving at Ulavani, which looked a lot different to what you guys have now. I'm super proud of you know what you guys have created there. But I remember mm -hmm. arriving there as a, as a 19 year old boy with blonde hair. Believe it or not, long blonde hair, <laughs> just coming straight out of high school, and I mean, incredible, incredible memories. But and Candice, I don't know if you want to want to start off. Just Ulvani, fifteen years. Where did it all start? And you know, how did you guys get to where you are now? Okay, well, yeah. I mean, we started out. We used to do training for other training providers, um, and we started up another school previously in our other life. And then um, as the years went on, we decided to rather have something for ourselves. You know, we were very family orientated and we just felt that having 
a school or a product that was very family orientated and our own would just make so much more sense to us. Um, and also we wanted to have a campus where we had the beach and the bush. So, I mean, you know, our campus is about an hour away from uh, PE. Uh, we're close to Kenton on Sea as well, Grahamstown, all those gorgeous places. Um, so yeah, so we, we Skulk used to come down and do assessments in the Eastern Cape. And uh, we met up with Bill Folds, who you know very well, and William Folds and Giles Gush and the big landowners of Amakala. And uh, they welcomed us with open arms. Um, we met them in about 2003 to 2004. And um, we didn't have a campus at that stage. So Giles Gush had uh, also um, that invited us to, which you'll remember at your first campus, which was the Woodbury Tented Camp which turned from the ox wagons, thank heavens, <laughs> into the tented camp. Um, <laughs> and we were there for a while um, and then moved to the Ulubani campus that everyone saw now on the video. Uh, we moved there in 2009. So that piece of property is 350 hectares. Um, it's actually owned by a student that came be just before you, Ben Bremer, a Dutch chap. Um, and he purchased the land from Giles Gush and then decided to build the, the campus there, which I mean, we're very lucky. We've got Zebra, we've got Impala, we've got Warthog, we've got Springbuck. Um, it's nice for jogs, you know, it's quite safe. Um, we've got our own entry exit gate into Amakala. So on that 350 hectares, you know, it's quite nice for a little bit of space. The guys can go for walks, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, so we, we've got our own entry and ex exit onto Amakala, which um, we also manage all the guides on Amakala. That's how we're able to, to operate on Amakala Game Reserve, which is eight and a half thousand mm. hectares. And that's where you did your first placements once yeah. you were done with us, because you did the one year course, you went on to Reed Valley. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so we've been there at Olivani campus now for 11 years. Um, we try to make it a very lodge-like environment so that, you know, either if we, you know, as a student coming there, you knew sort of what to expect when you go to a lodge, you know, which we thought just made sense instead of putting the oaks in tents and, you know, they don't really understand the whole concept of a lodge. So from getting your vehicle ready to getting your cooler box ready, you know, we do the whole story from the start. We host guests, we have real guests for your game drives, you know, so making a lodge-like environment just made sense to us. Um, we also try very hard to be, uh, have a green environment. So everything's on solar panels. Uh, we've got our own veggie garden. We try and recycle, reuse, reduce um, all of that jazz as well. Um, we've got an amazing lecture room. So that's sort of the lounge area, what you guys can see now, the dining room area. So we try and, and eat meals and stuff together as well um, as a family should. Um, then we've got a, that's a outside LARPA area. So that little um, tent there, you can see the solar panels on the left hand side, which operates the entire campus. Um, and we've got a lacquer pizza oven and bra area and inside is a pool table and some sofas and just, you know, a little bit of place to chill. That's the um, dining room area. Um, and in the back there is where all the magic happens in the kitchen, which is why everyone puts on weight when they come to Ulevani as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, even the young oaks like Johan um, and then that is our lecture room uh, and to the left is that of that is actually the view of Amakala which is incredible um, a lot of these um, that's our older bar, um, older rooms we did build a couple of new rooms a few years ago but this is our original stone rooms and you can see we've got a nice outside inside shower the vervet monkeys also like to join you every now and then in the shower <laughs> so that's a lot of fun uh, that's the view I'm not even lying um, from the, the, the veranda of, of the campus um, and where you can see just behind the rainbows I'm a Carla game reserve it's I mean we've been there for 15 years we've lived we've been in the hospitality and guiding industry for 25 years so for us to stay in one place for 15 years it must be very special um, it's a beautiful place um, it is a place that people can call home um, and yeah nature heals people so it's it's a perfect place to come and and just breathe sometimes you know 100 percent and, and I, that, that view I like I can't get enough of that it is um, it is spectacular like when you 
when you wake up in the mornings and you just see that view. I remember even at the old campus, there used to yes. be some mornings, there used to be like a blanket of mist uh, yeah. that you get there. And it's just, I mean, it's the perfect way to, um, to wake up and, and start the day. Guys, I'm just going to, um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please feel free to, um, to put it in the, in the chat box or um, shoot your <laughs> questions. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea quickly of just where um, Amakala Game Reserve is situated, where, where this campus is. So let me just do this. Just to give you guys an idea from where we are in Johannesburg. That's cool. Way down in the southern part. So about halfway between uh, Port Elizabeth and, and Grahamstown. Okay. Um, we're going to get to um, to some of the courses uh, pretty soon. If I can just get this right. Okay, there we go. We're going to get to some of the, the, the courses pretty soon. And Skalkin, you are involved with, um, with all of that. And um, for those of you who, um, and Skalk, you're going to hate me saying this, but you probably be the most humble person I've ever met. And often to a point where I've said to you so many times, you have to start sort of putting books out or let people get to know you a bit better because just the, uh, the wealth of knowledge and, and I think the, the way that you bring it across in, in such a humble way is, is really refreshing. And um, yeah, for those of you that, um, that want some knowledge, definitely sort of, you have to get onto one of these courses to really sort of experience it for yourself. Um, let me quickly, oh dear, where did I go now? Sorry, yeah. <laughs> You're worse than us at this, Johan. <laughs> okay, just hang on a second. I had it, I promise yeah. you I had it here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where did I? It, it was up, was it, are you looking for the video? Yeah, no, I'm looking How for the you? document that I put together. Oh, here oh. it is. <laughs> um, I mean. So when a, I'm just going to play another video for you guys and then we can get sort of to the to the courses and what it entails but isn't just another short clip to give you an idea of what it's all about I I mm -hmm. we're about to go off on an amazing adventure when you go out there you just experience pure nature there's no better feeling mm -hmm. in the world and I did not realize what big an influence I can actually make on the population of species, the protection of species. We need to have respect for animals. We don't need to have impact on the animals at all. This course has highlighted how little we are actually doing to protect such an important part of our ecosystem and our life. Out in the bush, students really get to understand how animal behavior works and how it relates to us. At Bulevani Environmental Training, we offer a variety of Gaza accredited courses. Whether you are looking to start your career in the ecotourism industry or you are an existing guide who wants to expand on your qualifications, let our attention to detail and personal hands on approach ensure your success. Over the years, we have seen many people come through Olivani and they have really grown as people. They've come into themselves, they've become confident, they believe in themselves. <laughs> Olivani instructors don't just focus on helping you through the qualifications, but helping you through life. We know that the company is truly a place where everybody cares for everybody. We don't have nature, we actually don't have anything there. We decided they made to get up this morning and uh, go out and learn something. <laughs> At Bulevani, we aspire to create exciting learning experiences filled with fun. But at the end of the day, our ultimate goal is to ensure that you acquire the specialized skills needed to be successful in the guiding industry.
Yo, can I come back? <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting. I'll give you a permit. <laughs> no, really, it's um, yeah, bring it back. Such uh, such fond memories. Um, Scott, let's um, let's chat a little bit about the courses. I can open up the the website and um, sort of go through the the courses from there. But um, you know, there, there's quite a few different different courses that you that you have available. I mean, let's start off with the the comprehensive guide course. If you just want to give us sort of a bit of an explanation on what that uh, what that entails. Okay, thank you very much, Juan. Thanks everybody for the opportunity. Um, and uh, it's people like you, Johan, that makes me happy at the end of the day. It's, it's not about me. It's about uh, people like you that come through us and seeing your success in life and seeing you grow is, is what makes us happy. Right, so uh, just to run through what we offer at, at Ulevani. So our, all our training or our career-focused training or courses are... Um, built around our comprehensive guide course. The, the comprehensive guide course is a one-year course which uh, comprises of three guiding qualifications. And those three guiding qualifications is the, um, the apprentice field guide vehicle-based qualification. It is the apprentice trails guide qualification that prepares you to be a, a second in charge on walking trails where dangerous animals occur. And then the third guiding qualification is a marine specialization qualification. So the comprehensive guide one year course is built around those three qualifications that we cover through the first six months. And then there's a six month work placement where we find suitable lodges for our candidates to, to join either in the guiding um, fraternity or, or straight into a guiding position if they older and has got work experience but for the younger um, school leavers we give them lodge experience where we give get give them opportunity for six months to gain um, work experience in the lodge and to really get the feel of, of what it's all about so that's our comprehensive one year guide course uh, the three guiding qualifications and then the six month placement in, included uh, we also have other options we also have the versatile six-month course. You wonder if you can uh, find that one. That's it. So the versatile um, six-month course also includes the three guiding qualifications, the apprentice field guide, uh, vehicle-based qualification, the trails guide qualification, and the marine specialization. But these, this course is more for people that have got work experience already, a little bit older, and they want to go straight into employment um, after the course. So that's only the six month, um, three guiding qualifications included in the versatile guide qualification. And th these are more for the people that it's got work experience already and we can find them employment straight after the six month training. Um, then our next course is uh, the essential 19 week course. Um, if marine guiding is not a passion of yours straight away, uh, then the essential guide course is, is uh, what you're looking for. It uh, includes two of the guiding qualifications. It's the apprentice field guide qualification that prepares you for vehicle bound um, safaris and also the apprentice uh, trails guide qualification that prepares you for to be the second in charge on walking trails in areas of dangerous game. So if marine guiding is, is not a passion of yours straight away then this is the the right course to it's the essential course to get into the industry um, there's there's very few lodges in wilderness areas that will employ you without the experience of walking safaris so that's why we call this the essential guide qualification that's if you've got more experience uh, you've got some work experience that's really the the essential course for you to get into the industry then if uh, for people that uh, finish school um, and is on a gap year or people that maybe do not have a year to take off to do the comprehensive guide course, they can also just do the foundation guide course, the apprentice field guide course that prepare you for safaris on vehicles. That is a 10-week course and that really is the foundation of all 
um, guiding qualifications. You, this is the minimum qualification you need to get into the tourism industry as a guide. <laughs> and this 10 week course uh, will prepare you for uh, entering the, the, guiding the guiding industry as such. So th that is basically what our, all our training is, is built around. Uh, it's built around the comprehensive one year uh, guiding course with the three different guiding qualifications and six month work experience. But you can also break it down according to your, your own needs and, and expectations uh, that you need as, as an individual. So those, those are our career orientated courses. Um, we are also very excited about a uh, new development in today's world. We need to adapt uh, to uh, how the future is going to look like. And we've decided to go on uh, uh, to develop an online platform uh, with Ulevani. It is a massive undertaking. Um, everything that takes place in the classroom, everything that takes place on, on a practical excursion, all the trainers' knowledge and experience of the last 15 to 20 years, we are now putting on our online database or a platform. Um, so this is taking some time to, to accomplish, but we, there, there's a second option of achieving your apprentice field guide qualification. If uh, one does not have 10 weeks to get away and do the full-time apprentice field guide qualification, We've now got a new option where you can join us online for a 10 week program where we will take you through all the theoretical work as well as the species that you need to study um, on a 10 week platform. This, this is a, a structured um, course. So it's not a start when you want and finish when you want. Uh, it's a 10 week structured course. And, and that's the way we want to do it to, to keep people motivated and uh, keep them ticking and enthusiastic about their qualification. So there's uh, certain subjects we do every week and those subjects will be tested every Sunday of each week. Once you are successful in the online 10 week course, then you join us on site for five weeks. And during that five weeks, you will be out in the bush continuously. And that's where we will then work on your practical skills and prepare you for your practical and theory exam at, at the end of those five weeks. So this might also be an option for people that um, are interested in changing their careers. Um, that does not have 10 weeks to take to go away. They can also take the first 10 weeks and, and, and see what, what is the knowledge base and what is all expected of, of this qualification before um, you are committing 100% to, to a guiding career. So this is one way of, of getting into the guiding industry is our 10 week online course and then join us for five weeks to uh, complete your course um, where we focus mostly on, on the practical skills necessary to gain this qualification. So very excited about this uh, online and on-site course. Um, so that's another way of, of gaining your, your guiding qualification. It might also be an option for people that want to get a guiding qualification, but uh, can't get away for for full 10 weeks as such. So those are all our career focused guiding qualifications. We also offer um, environmental enthusiast experiences. So one one of these environmental enthusiast experiences that we offer is the uh, nature enthusiast certificate. If we go to the nature enthusiast certificate, uh, a little bit down you on Environmental enthusiasts. Yeah, so yeah. yes, so the environmental enthusiast experiences include those two products that we, we also offer. So the Nature Enthusiast Certificate is exactly the same 10 week course that the apprentice field guides do. So 10 week online training that, that one does. But the last week, week 10 of the course, um, so, so let me just start again with the Nature Enthusiast. Certificate. So the Nature Enthusiast Certificate is for, we see a lot of people return guests to Africa and people that's been around the bush and been to many places, but they, they want to know more about what is actually going on in the function of the whole ecosystems. And they want to know what the guides know. So the Nature Enthusiast Certificate takes you through exactly the same subjects as what a nature guide needs to study. The only difference is week 10 
on the online course for the full qualification, we cover guiding skills just before you come for the five week practical training. The Nature Enthusiast online course is a 10 week course. It's purely theoretical. It is not for a qualification. And the final week of the, of the online course does not focus on guiding skills, but focus on preparing your, you for your final exam at the end of that week 10. So it's, it's a theoretical certificate um, but it, you obtain exactly the same amount of information and knowledge and understanding of all the subjects as what the normal guide would do. So this we find is a lot of return guests to Africa, people that's traveled around a bit, that want to know more. Um, they book onto this nature enthusiast uh, certificate. Um, then the second nature enthusiast experience that we offer is the environmental explorers experience. This explorer's experience is, is a four week experience where we take our, our clients through the different types of guiding qualifications that we do offer. Um, so it's four weeks. The first week you spend with the field guides and, and spend some time yeah. with the field guide, field guide students to see the behind the scenes of what it takes to be a field guide. So your first week you'll be on with the field guides on vehicle based activities and just enjoy it. There's no exams or anything involved. It is just to be in the life of a guide for a week. The second week you'll be joining the trails guide group where you'll be on foot uh, every single day, following big animals, doing a lot of tracking skills, listening to what is going on in the bush and just really get a feel for what it takes to, to be a trails guide. Um, in the industry. The third week you'll, you'll spend with the marine guides um, at our marine campus and there you'll get to know what all is um, entailed in the life of a marine guide. The final week you'll join one of our specialization courses, the bird guide course, and you will get an idea of what it takes to be a, a bird guide. So it's an experienced um, offered to people that want to see behind the scenes a little bit. They've, they've been around the block, they've, they've been to many game reserves, um, they've been carried around on a silver platter, but now they want to know a little bit more behind the scenes, what, what it takes to be a guide and, and what's the, the life of a guide all about. So it, it introduces you to the four different types of guiding in Africa uh, and you can have a bit of a, a taste of, of each type of guiding lifestyle. Um, if you wish, you could also just join one of these weeks, weeks if you want. For instance, the, the Trails Guide Week is very exciting where we focus on tracking skills. So uh, following animals and being part of an animal's life without actually seeing the animal. So you can join one week of Trails Guides uh, if you just want to get away. Um, we can bring you on with and uh, we can <laughs> get on foot and do some macro photography. <laughs> macro photography, make his ears like stand up bar. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the, the idea of, of the uh, Explorers four weeks is to really get behind the scenes and uh, get to know what it takes to be a guide and, and, and be a guide for, for, for a bit of, bit of time. So that's the, the nature Explorers or the, the explorers experience is the four weeks. And as I said, if you just want to join for one of those weeks, people are welcome to do that as well. So those are the, the not career orientated um, products that we offer, the nature enthusiast, for those who want to learn more, but don't really want to have the full qualification. Um, we also find that the nature enthusiast certificate candidates who has done the nature enthusiast theoretical part, want a little bit of experience to just go and apply everything that they've learned. So they'll join us for the four weeks after they finish their 10 week online course to come and apply what, what they've studied for the last 10, 10 weeks. So that in a nutshell is basically mm -hmm. our career focused um, qualifications and then also some uh, environmental explorers experiences. That's awesome, awesome. Thanks, Carl, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Guys, um, I see there's, there's quite a few questions that um, I think let's, let's get into that now before we fall um, too far behind. So Lucas asked here, at my advanced age of 37, Lucas, that's still... Oh, Lucas, you're a big chicken, man. <laughs> plenty, plenty left in the tank. <laughs> Can I still go into a guiding career? In addition, are there any restrictions for internationals? 
Uh, to answer that, 37 is definitely not old to, to enter the, the industry. Uh, many moons ago, the, the industry used to be an environment where South African boys, when they finish their school, they go and play around in the bush for, for two or three years before they realize what to do with their lives, and then they'll go to university and study. But uh, tourism has is, is, is become a complete profession. So the, the, the average age just of, of guides in the Eastern Cape um, 15 years ago was about 19, 20 years old, was the average age of guides. Uh, these days, the, the average age of guides are 30. And people are making a career out of guiding. It's not just two years of playing in the bush and get that fixed and then start the real life. Uh, the industry has changed as well. In the past, you couldn't get married and have children and all the rest in schools and all the rest on, on the game reserves. But that's changed drastically. Um, the companies want older people that are married with children because they're more stable. They, they will stay for longer. They're more committed. Um, and uh, so the, the, the whole industry has really changed in, in the last couple of years. It's, it's a true profession. And people are guides for their whole life. I know guides at 50, 60 years old that still do walking safaris. Uh, without any problems. He's so, not talking about himself. No. <laughs> so we, we often have, we often have uh, people that, especially 35 to 40, that have realized that they, they need to follow their dreams and follow their passion on, in life and sell up everything, resign and come to the bush and start a career in, in guiding. So it's, it's not unusual. Um, for internationals, it's not that easy. Um, South Africa really need to offer the whatever employment we have in South Africa to, to local people. But I know of many successful guides in Africa that uh, just need you, you just need to work it out in terms of that you create jobs when you come into the industry that you don't just take jobs. So it's it's a it's a different approach that you can't just take in Africa. You need to come and give back as well, either in the form of getting donations for local people to get uh, training and opportunities to get into the industry or whatever form it might be. But I know many international um, guides working in Africa and South Africa uh, that has been successful in getting a work permit and some even permanent residency. So it also depends how persistent you are and how dedicated you are to, to the process. Yeah, so that's a good point. nothing is impossible. Um, and if you can dream of it, then you're halfway there. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Great, great question, uh, Lucas. And uh, I mean, feel free to to get in touch if um, if we can help you with that. Very, very happy to help. Charlotte. So Charlotte, um, she's asked me about this before. Actually, I think we've uh, we've spoken to her before. But she says, I would love to go into the guiding industry, but I'm only sixteen, so I have two more years of school. Do you allow for anything like job sharing, volunteering, or any other way that will allow me to get an idea of what it is like before I make the decision to start training and take a full course? Something I can do at 16 or 17. Okay. Um, it, it, um, it very much depends on, on people's own interest and, and level of knowledge. But the, for instance, a nature enthusiast certificate might be a fantastic starting point to see exactly what is expected uh, knowledge-wise and experience-wise for, for the, the foundation um, qualification in, in guiding. So the Nature Enthusiast Certificate is, is definitely something um, to pursue maybe, to, to give you a, a real idea of, of what is all uh, it entails. Um, maybe one of the environmental explorers makes you could join us. Yeah, the, the nature in explorers uh, four weeks could also be a good taste as to see what is expected. Uh, but it, 16 years old, it, it all depends. We've, we've had 17 year olds, international 17 years um, olds and South Africans that has been on the course and, and finished everything successfully. So the, the level of knowledge that we offer on the courses are basically national certificate, high school level, um, natural science, biology, uh, geography, uh, level of, of knowledge. So it's, it's not at diploma or university um, level. It's, it's based, 
it's based on the national certificate, the final year of high school's level of knowledge. Um, but if, uh, if you're interested in, in this type of lifestyle, then I think the nature enthusiast is, is a certificate is a very good starting point to see exactly what is the level of knowledge. Um, if you can get away and join us for the four weeks, you really get a feel of what the lifestyle eat is for yeah, each different type of good. guiding. That will also give you a very good idea of, of where you see yourself in the industry. Is it more of, of a marine type of environment or more photography? Is it more trails guide, walking safaris that you want to offer or uh, vehicle-based safaris? That will give you a very good idea of, of what type of industry or guiding industry you want to enter. Yeah, Charlotte, I think maybe pop me a mail and then let me know where you're from and, you know, just a bit of your background and then we can work something in. But, you know, maybe just a week with us through one of those Environmental Explorers Week might just be nice for you to come and join us for that week as a sort of a job shadow. And then you can just get a feel for the whole thing and then we can go from there. I, I see your hand put my email address on there. So just pop me an email and then we can work something out for you. Yeah, so I put uh, I put Candice's email down in the, the chat blog and also the um, the website if you guys want to go have a look at those courses again. Uh, so Luke has got another question here. Um, is there a path into conservation work when doing one of the courses? Is there a path into conservation? In, uh, into conser into conservation work. So um, mm -hmm. Lucas, I presume you're talking about sort of um, you know. I don't know if you're sort of talking along the lines of sort of anti-poaching or if it's um, what exactly what conservation work it, it is. But basically, I mean, if you're in the guiding sort of industry, then you are doing conservation work um, to a degree. But I don't know, Skalk, if you've got, or Candice, yes. if you've got anything to no, add to being, being a guide is, is you play a massive role as, as a conservationist. You might not be fixing the roads, you might not be catching poachers, you not, might not be darting and counting animals, but, but you are educating the, the public. And, and you, so you play a massive role in, in terms of conservation. The, the messages that you give to the guests will make, the make or break what those pe people do when they get back home. Are you going to influence them to, to become nature lovers and make a change where they, where they live? So as, as a guide, you play a massive role in conservation, but also Guiding is, is, a, is a foot in the door in terms of conservation work. If you're looking at reserve management or anti-poaching mm. uh, or general reserve management. Um, if you look at, just for an example, Amakala Game Reserve, there is one reserve manager and his small team of, of ecologists uh, where there is about 25 guides working on Amakala Game Reserve. So, it is a foot in the door, uh, becoming a guide, you can get into the reserves. And then you can make yourself an asset for that reserve and you can prove yourself to the reserve manager and maybe work your way into the uh, conservation team as such. We, we know of many of our students mm, that started as lots. guides, <laughs> even international students that started as guides and uh, they work themselves and get involved in the conservation work and make themselves an asset for, for the property that they are offered jobs in, within the conservation um, fraternity as such. But the uh, guides play a massive role in conservation. Um, it's, it's not just tourism or hospitality, but uh, the information you give to guests is, is going to make a difference whether they go home and, and contribute to conservation or, or whether they're just going to brag about their photos. <laughs> <laughs> From all that. <laughs> And I, I agree 100%, you know, like, um, like you mentioned now, you, you, you get the qualifications, you, and essentially, you know, if you're going into the conservation side of things, you need to have that experience about, about nature and about um, the wildlife side of things. I think a lot of the time, and that's why I, like, I'm so happy to have you guys uh, on this webinars, because I think a lot of the time, and maybe it, it, it's God's fault to a degree as well, but I think a lot of the time people come on, this, on, these, um, on these safaris or experiences and you can either have a fantastic experience if you have a good guide or you can have a shocker of an experience and if you don't have a good guide. And I think a lot of the time, I definitely thought that before I joined the course, you know, I, like being South African um, bush boy, like I knew what an impala looked like, I knew what a lion looked like, I knew what an elephant looked like. 
and in fresh. my eyes, I thought I was halfway to being a guy, you know, and that's what a lot of these people, a lot of time people think, you know, if I can tell you what an impala is and all of these things, it, you're halfway there. But then until you get to the force and you actually realize what a massive world is out there, you know, from ground roots, literally from the soil to the grasses and things and how it all combines. And it's, it's like, for me, it's like a big eye opener. And it's, it's definitely a case of the more you know, the better it gets. You know, once you sort of get into it, it, it becomes sort of an, an addiction and, and how everything um, mm -hmm. comes together and falls into place. But um, yeah, Lucas, I think as, as Falk mentioned, you know, once you sort of acquire the knowledge of uh, the, the knowledge that you need from from a guiding sort of background, then you know the world's your oyster. Especially you know, nowadays, as you as you mentioned, how the um, the guiding industry has changed. You know, there, there's so many different options for you, and so many different um, areas that you can specialize in if you if you wanted to. Johan, just to uh, expand on the on the anti poaching as well for for Lucas. Um, there, there's many there's many aspects to to anti poaching. Uh, there's the, the obvious anti-poacher who is in the field with firearms and camo and hiding in the bush and, and working his way to, to actually catch these, these poachers themselves. But there's also monitoring of these animals that gets poached. There, there's also, you know, everybody needs, to, everybody needs to be looked after in these anti-poaching teams. So it's also a business as such, which needs funding, needs fundraising, needs marketing. So one can get involved in anti-poaching, even it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you, you can get involved in, in anti-poaching of, of wildlife in Africa. Um, anti-poaching as such is, is, uh, is quite a dangerous job. Um, if everybody wants to, to, to become anti-poachers, uh, but it's, it's a military type of life. Um, it's sometimes difficult because you, you work at night and everybody else sleeps at night and you sleep during the day and everybody works and is active during the day. So it, there, there's a lot of sacrifices one needs to make to, to, to become an, an anti-poacher um, ranger as, as such. So it is a very fulfilling life, um, helping wildlife and, and really being there, but you also live a fairly secretive life where you can't really share too much of the information that you deal with on a daily basis. So you do live a, live a little bit of a, a secret of life as well. Um, but by all means, if, if, if that's um, who you are and you, you like being alone, you like being in the bush and, and submerged in, in, in looking after wildlife, then it's definitely um, the right job for you. But there's, as I said, there's many ways of, of getting involved in anti-poaching. Um, and it doesn't always involve you in cameras with, with a firearm in, in the bush. So get involved, you know, at any point, get, get involved and then see where your guiding qualification takes you and, and maybe you can get involved in it at, at the later stage. Yeah. Fantastic. I like this, uh, this next question. I'm loving the questions that have come in. There's actually so much I want to chat about, but I mean, we've obviously got a, a time limit on this, but we, let's get to the, the questions. Roderick asks, is photographic guiding covered in any of the courses? No, that's why we're going to hire you, hun, as a part-time. <laughs> as a part-time. We, we, no, we, we have chatted to you, Hannah, about it. And I mean, if there is a team that, you know, that he can get together of guests that want to come and sort of do the whole maybe environmental explorers and at the same time the whole photographic thing, then definitely we're open to that. Um, we did chat to Johan about it a couple of weeks ago when we did our first webinar, um, and we think it can work. Um, we're also looking at, I know that uh, Wild are looking at doing online courses, and now that we have an online course platform, we're also looking at maybe putting one of their courses on our platform as well. So definitely into the future. Um, but yeah, if you know, at any stage, if you want to do one of our courses and have the photographic experience at the same time, then you just need to contact Johan and we go from there. But so, uh, Johan, also just to add, we, we do cover the basics of, of photography and, and the mm. basic settings, but, but we are by no means specialists or, or professionals. Like you guys. <laughs> so coming on a course will, will give you the opportunity to start playing around maybe with your camera. You, you're in the environment, you can start taking pictures, mm. get to know your equipment and, and the basics of, of photography. But so the, the opportunities are there and we can help you to, to set up and, and get going. But we, I, I would suggest go with a, with a professional team to, to really get 
into the, the nitty gritties of photography. That's, that's perfect. And Roderick, um, yeah, give us, um, send me an email, send me an email or Instagram message. <laughs> what we can maybe do is then do one of those um, courses that we can help you with and then do like um, a two, three or four, like four week course at Ulavani because then you're going to be out in the field, you're going to have the opportunities and then you can really put those skills um, into practice. I think that's going to be the best way to do it. Yeah, Skulk, um, Skulk, sorry, Skulk, Justin, Tata, my daughter, they all avid photographers. So they all, you know, busy learning and carrying on together. Justin's got his own page. Our daughter's got her own photography page. So it's not like you're not going to learn anything. Definitely yeah. you will learn something. But, you know, like all of us, we all need to learn something new every day. So we all learn together. Exactly. So here's an um, interesting one from Carmen. She says, hi, um, if you have already completed your apprentice guide qualification and went to university and completed <laughs> your degree but want to get back into guiding, how would you get back into the guiding industry? Um, if, if you have your apprentice field guide qualification already, um, then you can register as, as a guide in South Africa. So you need to contact the registrar in, in your specific province where you want to guide. And the apprentice field guide qualification is the, the minimum qualification you need to register as a guide in South Africa. So uh, you can go ahead and, and register with, with the registrar in, in the province. And uh, Pay get, your Gaza saves. No, not to not to not to register as a, as a guide in South Africa. Oh, so I the guides are the Field Guides Association of South Africa assist you in gaining qualifications. And once you've got a qualification, then you need to register with a provincial registrar as a, a registered guide in that specific province. So if you want to go and, and guide in Kruger National Park, then you either need to register with the Limpopo or Mpumalanga registrar directly. And then you get a badge that you need to wear as a, as a registered guide in that province. I, I hope that helps answering. Yeah, I think, I think that, that sums it up. Um, Carmen, I mean, they, Scott, you would, you would know these things um, better than me now. I'm a little bit out of it. But once you have your, um, your FOGASA, your minimum qualification, that part of it doesn't expire. I mean, mm. there, there, are, there are other qualifications um, like uh, deeds and then your advanced rifle handling and first aid and these things that you have to renew every, every few years. But once you've got that minimum qualification, your FUGASA level one qualification, that doesn't expire. So mm. you can go back to your university and, and study there for two, three years, get that all done. And once you're done with that and you want to get back into the guiding <laughs> industry, as long as your, um, your FUGASA subs have been paid and you're up to date with your, um, your first aid and your, uh, your deed and those kind of things, you can put yourself out there and guide pretty much wherever you want in, in South Africa. Am I right in saying that? 100%. Yes, the, the, the guiding qualification that, that you obtain has is, is already assessed your guiding abilities and the knowledge that was required for that specific level. So that can't be taken away. So if you've been out of the industry for a couple of years, then yes, it's, your answer is just make sure that your first aid is up to date. And if you are going to conduct walks in, in dangerous game, that your advanced rifle handling and those type of things are up to date. But if you've got your apprentice field guide qualification, you can register as a guide once again. Okay. Perfect. I think that, that, makes, uh, that makes perfect sense. Guys, we like um, throw a few more questions. We almost um, almost at the end of it. But um, Candice, I, I wanted to, to chat to you a little bit because you used to give me a lot of hell about my, my laundry lying all over the place, and um, I think that's that's one of the the, the great things about um, I think about you guys as a team starting off, and then now also the team that you have in place now is it's not just about you know being out in the bush and know, getting the, the guide qualification and rough and tough and like try and be, you know, as, um, as strong as you can possibly be. But you also bring a bit of a refined side to it, which I think is, is great for, you know, just sort of polishing off the guide. And I think that, that makes a difference between like a, a five-star guide and a, and a two-star guide. I'm not talking about like in a lodge environment, but I'm just talking about, you know, um, the way the guide... And empathy. 
<laughs> but it's also like the 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 way the guys uh, conduct themselves and and I think often like I mean we're quite lucky we get to go to a few places and you can see the guys that have had that sort of um, polished training compared to guys that have just sort of you know been hit with just the the bush side of things and you want to talk a little bit about maybe some of the um, extra things that you guys do that's not just sort of the, the push training. I saw a video there of like the wine tasting and things like that. Yeah, so uh, obviously I'd, I'd, I'm going to check with Judy and make sure that you found the wash basket. <laughs> She's still losing that battle. Skull, Skull still hasn't found the wash basket after 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I think you know for us being in the industry for 25 years you know I've never been a guide but for me it's always been about the guides whole the pre presentation and looking after your guests and hospitality and welcoming people so you know we do do uh, either wine pairing or my new thing is a gin bar because I don't drink so much wine anymore I now drink more gin coming back next week right? I mean, it's great. It's great. And also the gin bar has become the new in thing in the hospitality industry in any case, which is fabulous for me, except during lockdown, because now we can't get any alcohol. <laughs> um, so we, I do do a little bit of a wine pairing and a hospitality evening with them and sort of the do's and don'ts, you know, because a lot of the guys, like you said, I mean, we've had students arrive with no shoes and they don't wear shoes for three weeks or you know, they messy or whatever the case is. But being a guide, you know, when you're with your guests and that type of thing, it's quite important to look your best and present yourself in a really great way. And it does make a good impression on the guests. Um, so we do do a little bit of that. And we also host people from the reserve. So we host previous Ulavani students or the lodge managers or lodge owners. So we get them to come for a dinner and the students do from the start. So they plan the menu, they do the decor, they do the cooking, they serve the drinks, they do the whole toots for the evening. And it's really nice. You know, it, it's first of all, it's great teamwork because not everyone can cook. Yeah. Um, not everyone is good with people. So, you know, you, you get them to learn where their strengths and weaknesses lie, whatever the case is. So, so that is, you know, for me, I, I call it the hospitality 101. And it's just a basic rundown of, yes, you look great and you feel great and look after your guests and no, don't, please wear deodorant or whatever the case is. Yeah. <laughs> and don't drink too much gin and start hitting on your guest's wife or husband, whatever. No, exactly. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's so important. I think it's no, so listen, important. I mean, we've seen a lot of guides over the years and, and these little basic things that some people think are such a small thing actually is a really big thing thing um, the other thing is our unique um, assessment process where we actually have real guests on your level one assessment so it's not your fellow um, fellow students or whatever going on your game drive it's actually a real guest we get guests from Grahamstown and schools and people from PE people are actually fighting to get onto assessment drive so you know we try and, and use the real guests because then you know they have two drives and they actually get into the whole flow of things and they understand that they're looking after the campus there's guests coming in and out the whole time so it really is the whole experience from the start of how a lodge operates and you know your responsibilities as a guide and your leadership skills and your team working and yeah so it's not just about the training and about i mean yeah look at you look where you are now you know that's, <laughs> yeah so, yeah that's it, it, it took a while it took a while but we got there <laughs> yeah we only took 14 years but it's all right <laughs> <laughs> um, i've got one last question for for skulk and i think it, it's something that um i've also thought about a uh, quite a lot you know you, you with with the training of guides, you know, there's obviously there's two parts. To it. There's the theoretical stuff, which you can't get away from, um, the in books, the studying and things, and then there's also the, the practical side of it. But what do you feel, you know, I mean, you've been doing this for a very long time now. What do you feel is the, the hardest thing to train guides? You know, like I've, I've seen, like, I know what my answer is, like from just sort of seeing how guides um, operate. What, what would you say? And this is this is on the spot now. We, I mean, we we didn't discuss this, but I just thought yeah. about it today. It's three us on the spot there. The the most the most difficult part to training guides 
the most it's, difficult thing to train. You know, the, 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 the most difficult thing to train a guy, you know, like the, yeah. the theoretical stuff, you know, you can, you could be sitting like with the online courses now, you could be sitting in New York or in London and you could read about, um, you know, geology and grasp the concept and, you know, have that, have that book knowledge. But I mean, if, 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 if you, if you say that there's, there's nothing, then um, that's fine as well. No, no, no. no it, it's uh, for, for me the, the most, or rather to say it that way, it's most probably the most difficult because it's the most rewarding for, for us. At, at the end of the day, you know, for, for people to grow confident within themselves, people to believe in themselves is most probably the most difficult part. You know, working towards practical assessments and, and the guests are on their way and they are getting ready for their first guest arriving. When the panic starts setting in, and uh, all the knowledge disappears and you think you don't know anything, you can't handle it. So that portion, that how to really deal with situations, to, to have self-belief and to have confidence within your own abilities, that is the most rewarding part to me, is if we go through the training and even the most bravo, the biggest guys that think they are the cat's whiskers, when uh, the guests... When the guests are on their way, everybody feels the same. That uh, so that that bit that uh, that they Most achieve they achieve that self confidence and they achieve that self belief. That to me is the most rewarding part of of training. It's most probably the most difficult as well is to convince people that you do know enough that you yeah, you are yeah. good enough and uh, to see the guests leaving and and everybody's clapping hands and congratulating and and loving it. And the faces that turn around to me is, is just priceless. You know, they, there's, there's very little more rewarding than people having that confidence in themselves and, and believing in their own abilities. That, that to me is, is the most important bit of, of these guiding qualifications. That's awesome. That's awesome. Like, right you. like you. <laughs> See, you make us so proud. <laughs> As, I mean, I could um, literally sit and, and chat to you guys the, the whole evening. It's uh, like so, so, so good to, um, to chat to you guys. Um, yeah, everyone, everyone just going through the questions just to make sure we haven't missed anything here. All looks good. But thank you so much for your guys' time. Um, thank you for what you do for all the guides, for the guiding industry. Um, like, I mean, you guys put out phenomenal guides one after the other. So I think it's a big, um, big compliment to, to what you guys do. And I can't wait. As soon as the, these borders open, I'm, uh, I'm coming straight down to you guys and, uh, and catch up again. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys have played a massive, massive part in, in my life. And I know in, like a lot of other guys' lives. So, yeah, thank you so much for, um, for what you guys do for the industry. Thank you to you and Wild Eye for hosting us. It's amazing. And it's just so amazing to see where you are today. You make us very proud. You're one of our shining light children. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. And thanks to everyone that joined us today. It was really, really cool. We were quite nervous, but I think we managed to survive it. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we'll, I mean, there's so many photos and things I, I wanted to share and stories that, Maybe down the line we, we can do another one and maybe go into a little bit more depth um, because I mean, Ooh. like a lot of people seem to have loved it. So maybe we can do it again in the future and um, awesome. go a little bit deeper into this whole thing. Okay, like okay. It. thank you very much, Juan. Thank you everybody for the opportunity. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a lovely thank you for watching, day. and this will be on YouTube by maybe tomorrow afternoon. So thank you so much. Okay. And, um, yeah, we'll catch up with you guys soon. Okay, cool. Thank you very right. much. All right, have a good one. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.